okay so now I can do it it's no problem perfect you can uh, you know uh, Sharif, you, you can disable the waiting room because the waiting room is it's gonna create some some issues here so if you uh, want to disable it disable it will be good okay you can disable it from your side because uh, I yeah. think you now uh, the host Okay, I just disabled it. So everybody, everybody should should be in here. Okay, I just uh, before you start, I just need to confirm that please, if anyone uh, open uh, his uh, camera, please close it uh, in order to save the internet connection and the bandwidth. Okay, fantastic. Okay, welcome everyone. Uh, just give me a second. I'm gonna get everything ready on the screen. I will clean the screen a little bit because we have a lot of floating um, uh, boxes here. So welcome everyone. This uh, this session is about uh, IoT, AI, and blockchain as the catalyst of digital transformation. What I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about well, first about the uh, uh, about uh, the digital transformation. What does it mean, and uh, the different components of the digital transformation. And this is global. It's not just specific for a certain region in the world. Uh, and why uh, the uh, digital transformation is very important, and especially especially what we have now. And I'm talking about the case here in, in, in the United States where a lot of companies being forced to go to digital transformation because of the COVID-19, because of the virus. Uh, many companies were not ready to go uh, uh, completely online and they suffer a lot. And a lot of them actually filed bankruptcy. They couldn't adapt with the change to the digital transformation. The, uh, the companies that uh, manage to go through the process and they have an option to be on the digital transformation and at least they have a, something going on with digital transformation, which is uh, uh, simply the employees can access the information and can do their job using uh, the internet. It's online. There's no issues with that. Uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a long story, so I'm not going to bore you with the details. I'm going to go through the process one by one, and whenever there's a chance, I can give you some kind of examples about uh, what happened with the digital transformation and how the, uh, uh, the virus was really one of the biggest uh, catalysts for, for uh, digital transformation. Uh, this is a little bit of information <clears throat> about myself. Uh, okay, somebody somebody is playing with this line. Okay, uh, this is detailed uh, s some information about my background. Uh, uh, you know, very simply that I uh, I teach at uh, uh, two school at San Jose State and Stanford University. My focus is in four areas, which is I'm going to cover them very quickly in the next slide. Uh, I've been in the teaching for over twenty years, and uh, um, I have done a lot of interviews with the uh, you know, uh, with the media, uh, you know, on, uh, on the digital and emerging technologies. Uh, and this, uh, this is just a quick, uh, you know, a quick introduction. Uh, I published two books. The first one is the one that already in the market, which is uh, Secure and Smart Internet of Things. And that one is uh, used by all the universities. You see their names on the, on the screen from Berkeley, Stanford, Harvard, and Princeton. And Yale added that one, and also the Library of the Congress uh, added the title. Beside that one, the, um, the the book won an award last year, 2019, at San Jose State. My new book, which is coming out the end of July, inshallah, and that one is specifically talking about blockchain technology and application. Uh, the reason for it uh, to be delayed, it's supposed to be like the beginning of the year is because of the virus and there's a lot of things change after that. Now let's uh, dive deep into the definition of digital transformation because you can, you can ask five people about what is digital transformation and each and every one of them will give you a different definition. And that's based on their occupations, their job, their understanding of what is digital and what is transformation. Generally speaking, when we talk about digital transformation, this is this is the consensus. This is where everybody is really looking at it and say, this is, this is the common definition. So digital transformation is actually profound, deep transformation of many things. Number one is business, organizational activities, processes, competencies, and models for fully leverage what? The changes and opportunities of a mixed digital technology and, and their accelerating impact across society in a strategic and prioritizing way with the present and future shift in mind. Translation, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a loaded definition. What are you doing is you digitize everything. So it doesn't matter where you are, what time, 
uh, you know, you, you have, you can access all the resources of the company, of the service, of the organization, of the agency, uh, using the internet or using the digital means you have. No matter what device you have, no matter what, what you, know, you know, space and time and devices means nothing. So you didn't even notice that. You're jumping from your desktop, laptop to your phone and you're still, you're doing your job. And that's not easy because when you talk about how can you really manage all of that, you have to understand that you have changed so many things. And the definition is talking about this. It is a profound, it is deep transformation of the business itself, of the organizational activities like HR, marketing, sales, you name it. And also the processes and the competencies that mean the ability for people to do, to do their work. How many people are actually digitally literate, you know, where they can uh, use the, the technology without any problems or you can train them in a short term and then they will get it. So that's one thing. A digital transformation strategy aims to create few things, capabilities of fully leveraging the possibilities and opportunities of new technologies. And when we talk about this, we're talking about AI, artificial intelligence, we're talking about internet of things, we're talking about blockchain, we're talking about 5G, we're talking about so many things that the new technology is in the field now, we have to leverage that. We have to get to take advantage of the existing of these technologies so we can innovate. We can have a better way of doing our work. And I'm gonna show you some examples in a second here. A digital transformation uh, needs uh, a staged approach, means phases. You cannot just jump from being zero digital to 100%. You have to go through phases. And the phases itself has to be taking you know step by step in a very careful way um, I, I don't want to i don't want to you know even uh, talk about the resources here because you need the support from the top to the bottom which means uh, the administration the management the c level the ceo cfos all the people with the, the c at the beginning of their title uh, they need to support that and they cannot support that one and they will not support it until they understand the significance of why digital transformation is important. And I believe that after what we have seen with the virus and how it's kept people home, at least I'm talking about the case in the United States when you're talking, and, and California, which is we've been here sitting home for three months and it's not getting better. And uh, a lot of people lost their job because of that, because of the conversion, they couldn't, they couldn't do this kind of conversion. So the, it has to be staged, staged and with a clear roadmap and there's a lot of stakeholders, a lot of people has to get involved in that. And uh, there is no silos and internal, external limitation. So it should be an open field for this. Uh, the roadmap itself takes into account the end goals. What exactly you're trying to achieve and will continue to move through the digital transformation um, in a matter of de facto, which is this is what we are looking for. This is the change we are looking for to be a digital uh, innovative center. Uh, the areas that will be impacted by digital transformation is technically speaking all the side of the area. You have, to, you, have, you have to take this off your mind that it is just the IT or the technical department that will be impacted with this. Everything, inside and outside the business. The business activities and functions, digitized. A simple example we use here in the United States is something called DocuSign. A DocuSign is a service that provided by a company where you sign the documents in electronic way. I don't have to print it and then sign it and scan it and send it or fax it. All I'm going to do is I use this service and then I sign on the paper and sign. I have my digital signature. I sign it and it is authenticated and sent back to everybody and I got a copy of that. Saved tons of time and money and resources and paper. And this is just a simple way of doing business. This is just one function that being digitized and saved, you know, you know, tons of money for people and time and make it so easy for people to finish and process and read the contracts and sign them and they're done with it. The, the business processes, place an order, take an order, hiring, firing, all of these things will be digitized. Business models, whether how, how business model means how do you make money, uh, revenue, whether it is subscription, it is revenue where you sell one time, you're done, and business ecosystem itself has to be digitized. And that's mean not only you, everybody around you. Business asset management, how can you keep track of all the products and all the you know uh, assets you have in the company and organizational culture the mindset of people about accepting 
uh, the digital transformation is extremely important as much as the implementation of digital transformation. You take it to the partnership models. You know, I mean, you're not going to be the one who is singing by himself or herself <clears throat> this, this tune and nobody else is digital. There's no way for you to do business. Everybody around you, whether it's the customers, the vendors, the partners, the government, everybody has to be on the same pace. So they have to, uh, the digitization has to start from all sides. I mean, think, think about this when when people can apply for visas and apply for renewal of their passport or apply for the for their uh, driver license everything will be done online how much how much time <clears throat> you are really saving how much traffic you're saving how much how much suffering and headache you are saving instead of waiting online and you do everything online they have some kind of uh, you know portals or gateways where you can go and apply and process and upload the, pro the the documentation and you're done with that and this is exactly the essence of digital transformation now we're talking about the good side of this one before we jump into the different trends that uh, 2020 uh, will bring to digital transformation. I want to make sure that everybody understand the building blocks of digital transformation. When we're talking about building blocks, it means if you miss one, the whole building is down. This is the foundations. You, you have it all or forget it. Mindset, acceptance. Mindset means you accept the facts, you accept the, the, the idea of digital transformation. And I'm saying, I'm talking about this and I'm saying this one is really as important as any other uh, uh, you know, uh, building block in a sense of uh, uh, people <clears throat> usually they are afraid of the unknown and they always this sense about technology you're going to take my job and, and I don't blame them for that because there's so many job lost because of the technology but at the same time this could open the door for other opportunities when I talk about who will, who will build the digital transformation tools so the mindset can be done by training information uh, you know, um, you know, giving, educating the end user about how important it is to have digital transformation. And then you talk about the people who will do it. I mean, I'm not going to ask the IT department only to do this one. I want everybody to be part of that. Because if I would like to digitize a service in marketing, I need to sit down with the marketing uh, department, the marketing uh, people, and ask them, what exactly are you guys doing? How can we take this one and make it digital instead of all the paperwork and the phone calls and the emails and so we can have this one all digitized. Processes, it's another thing, which is another building you know, block for this. We have to, to look at the processes and digitize this one and also the tools used for that. Software, hardware, you know, that is needed for, for you to finish the, the, uh, the whole cycle. So uh, this will give you some kind of understanding how involved and and it's it's exactly it's a profound it's really a deep transformation it's not uh something you can do overnight or the weekend or one week this just has to go through the roots of the of the business now in the next few slides i'm going to talk about 10 digital transformation trends and then i'm going to focus on the three which which they are the subject of our talk tonight um, the um, IoT, AI, and blockchain. But I'm going to talk about the big picture, and then we can go and focus on the three catalysts that I believe they have the strongest and the have the most impact on digital transformation. The first one, I mean, I mean this this diagram uh, will give you an idea about all the ten. We're going to talk about them, and uh, I'm going to send a copy to uh, Sharif of this presentation, and 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 it's up to him if you want to share it with the with you guys, but I'm gonna send it to him. So let's go over the first one. Number one is 5G. Uh, 5G with all the noise around 5G, it's a really promising technology. And I'm one of the people who believe that 5G will take us to the next level. Give you an example. The 4G we have, which is the available service, the bandwidth for your smartphone, for your streaming, for you know, for the way you are, what you, you are communicating, you have it in your, in, in your phones. Uh, are really great. There's there's nothing wrong with that. It's just now we are we're upgrading ourselves to the next level. So a few things are gonna happen with the 5G. Number one is you have to change the phone. The hardware has to change, and that's why Apple, Samsung, Google, you know the other hardware companies they're looking for this technology uh, to uh, uh, to force everybody to upgrade. So you can you can utilize the speed. It's about a hundred times faster than what you have now. Application of this is uploading and downloading images and videos. Uh, you have, uh, for example, if you have uh, an ambulance that uh, driving from an accident site to the hospital, 
the doctor can have a complete x-ray using the 5G because of the bandwidth is really big. So we can change a lot of those processes that limited by the bandwidth using the availability of the 5G. The second one is that chatbots. And it's very common to go to a website and you're gonna find that small uh, you know, box pop up in front of you and ask you, how can I help you today? Most likely it is uh, a very simple artificial intelligence algorithm that have uh, limited you know, questions and answers, but that's changing. If you have time after the presentation, you can go and, and Google the term duplex of Google. And you're gonna see it's an AI that, it is, uh, that acts like a human and has emotions and can have reservation and it can, it can you know, discuss and talk and with people nonstop. So that's what we're talking, the chat, but which will change everything. For example, uh, just to give you the application of this one in real life, you know, uh, somebody sent me to another building in the, you know, uh, in the company, and I would like to know where is the conference room, where is the office of this one. I can have that chat bot will will tell me, okay, you go right, you go left, this is the right place. I can talk to it, so it can instead of asking somebody or texting somebody about where is that location, uh, and it's to the cloud, and the cloud is is a big thing. We are using Zoom. Zoom went up. In, uh, from 26 million users to 300 million users in three months. I mean, there's, there's nothing ever happened like this. Instagram took them a year to go to 100 million users. You're talking about a company like Zoom that exploded when it comes to that growth because it's the backbone for the digital, so-called the digital transformation of so many schools, universities, and businesses. So we're talking about the cloud, the cloud also a factor in the change of, in, in the availability of the digital transformation. The blockchain, I'm gonna keep it at the end, I'm gonna talk about, but the blockchain is for security. And we're gonna talk about how important it is with all the communication going on between the, the different parties in the company, in the, in the establishment, in the organization, you need to make this one secure. I mean, you are really secure as the weakest link. So if uh, one of the uh, nodes, if one of the employees there is not following the instruction, then it's all, all the protections you have, it's actually meaningless. And then we're talking about the AI, how the AI really impact the digital transformation. The AI always uh, focus on insights and how the insights themselves help you to make decisions. So for example, if we implemented a process for digital transformation, then we can uh, run some kind of analysis and look at the analytics of the use of this, of this digital transformation process. And if we see that it's really saving time and money and staff, then we'll continue. If there is a problem, we have to change it, but we cannot do that one by ourselves. That will be, that will be a different one. Okay, somebody is drawing on the, no, please, please don't draw anything on the, uh, uh, on the screen, please. Okay. Because it's gonna continue to all the, the, the slide, okay. Uh, okay. Okay, so GDPR. GDPR is uh, the uh, General Data Protection Regulation, which is a win-known uh, regulation that started on, uh, started on, in 2018 on, I think it's May uh, 25. I mean, the whole story about it is anybody who's doing business with Europe or any citizens of Europe, they must follow certain rules and respect the privacy of the, you know, of the different, uh, uh, you know, of different countries, which means if you break the privacy, you're going to be punished severely. An example of this one is uh, Google and Facebook. They, uh, the EU, the European Union, uh, they actually fined them uh, with almost uh, $2 billion for Facebook and about $7 billion for Google because they did not respect the privacy of the, of the citizens. Okay, let me do this because I, let me just, uh, I'm gonna remove the uh, sketch here, the animation here, just one minute. Okay, good. Uh, uh, please don't use any tools while we are talking because you, you're distracting everybody and you're not listening to the, to the talk here. The number seven is the AR, the augmented reality, which is something you imposed uh, at the top of reality. For example, there was this game, which is uh, Pokemon Go. Everybody got crazy about it, at least here in the United States. And 
where you can use your phone and you still can see reality, you can still see your surrounding, but there are some virtual objects that that available for you, you can deal with them. This is, can be used for so many things. For example, products. I can be showing the customers the product on the table and then I can you know, turn the products right or left. I can disassemble the products. The same thing for the schools. I mean, especially for the medical school, they can show them the human body and they can just open, you know, different layers of the body. Microsoft is famous for that. They have their own hardware to have the augmented reality, uh, you know, reality compared to virtual reality, which is completely block you from the outside and you're, you're living within that environment. That can change a lot of sales and marketing uh, to to something new, which is you, the the customers can try and they can live the experience of buying the product or using the service. Okay. Uh, and number eight is um, edge computing, or uh, and the edge computing is uh, is important because. Uh, just to understand what I'm talking about here, something called fog computing or edge computing is the concept of you have the cloud computing, which is cloud computing is uh, the data centers sitting somewhere in, in, in one of the areas where you have thousands of computers and you are dialing into those thousands of computers and get that information and they're centralized. And uh, the problem with this is if you have so many customers, uh, it starts slowing down. So there is this concept of edge computing or fog computing uh, where you will have part of the data center close to where the action is. If you know that in this city, there's a lot of requests, you know, so you can create a small data center close to that. Uh, and that will take off the load from the main center. It's exactly like the local government and the, the main government. So if something can be done locally, you don't have to bother the, you know, the main government as well you know, by, by simple requests. And number one, number nine is uh, IT services, which is consumption uh, based IT services. Uh, the outsourcing, everything like IT as a service. I don't have to hire, I don't have to go through the process of bringing all the hardware and the software. I can just uh, outsource that one and ask people, you know, from certain companies that provide these services to help me with that. Uh, an example of this one, if you have a company and this company is dealing with legal, you know, uh, lawyers and, uh, you know, and, and attorneys, and they don't want to have an IT department, so they can use this IT as a service to help them do the detailed transformation. The last one is as important as the rest of the trends. Number one is the CEO. If there is no support from the top, you lose because if the if the uh, head of the department, the head or the head of the company or the founder or the owner of the company are not into this, they're not going to commit the resources, money, time, people. They're going to say there's something else more important for that. But I think all the companies learn their lesson, especially with the situation we have with the COVID-19. They learn this one big time. They understand that this virus was a big warning, a wake up call for them, telling them that if you are not in this digital you know, world, you're gonna lose. You could be going out of business. Uh, we have bankruptcies right and left you know, here in the, in the United States. We have over 40 million people lost their jobs. And, and you're talking about companies that have been here for years and years. The reason for this one, they don't have the equivalency of a digital uh, company that people can buy and sell and deal with the company. They are more focused on the physical companies and they're more focused on people coming physically to their uh, locations or, uh, you know, or deal with them, you know, face-to-face. Uh, uh, -face and, and that's why they, they're gone, you know. The, uh, the movies, uh, uh, you know, we have AMC, the, one of the biggest, uh, you know, companies in the world for their theaters. Uh, uh, they are really uh, looking at the case of filing bankruptcy. But you have Netflix and you have, uh, uh, you know, uh, Apple TV Plus and you have Disney Plus, which is streaming services they're doing great why because this, they are they're digital and at disney they, they they have this branch immediately they say we're going to have this this option so we're not going to lose the customer so they made they, they they switched to the digital part of the company so this is just a list of the 10 trends of data transformation in 2020. now let's go deep into three of them which is the internet of things and blockchain and the last one is the artificial intelligence now, the Internet of Things as a concept itself, uh, 
It's basically an interrelated uh, uh, ecosystem of physical objects, sensors, actuator, virtual objects, people, services, platform, and network. Uh, to simplify this, the, the Internet of Things is actually four parts. The sensors, the network that sends the signal from the sensor, the cloud, which is where you process it with the artificial intelligence and the application you are using. An example of this, if you have, uh, if you have this uh, light bulb and you are uh, using an app to turn it on and off, you're going through the whole components we mentioned on the screen because you have the application, you have the sensor, and you have the communications, and then you have the, the decision about changing the color or turn it on and off. So this is, this is the simplest definition for the, uh, for the Internet of Things. Uh, practical examples of the, uh, the application today include precision agriculture, which is uh, looking at the farms and making sure that uh, you are not wasting water. At the same time, you are really giving all the farms, what is needed when it comes to, to uh, monitoring them and, and making sure that it is, uh, it is really uh, at, at the same level without wasting the time or wasting the water and, you know, and, and giving, uh, you know, the, the plants what, what they need. Remote patient monitoring with the case of the COVID-19 is important. Uh, some of the hospitals here in the United States, uh, the doctors will never go to the patient rooms with the COVID-19 they send robots and those robots has the face of the doctor and actually his the doctor is talking to the uh, to the patient because they want to minimize the interaction so this is going from the physical to the virtual in the past that was rejected you know with with the screaming voices everybody saying this is inhumane this is bad you guys have no time for us uh, would like to see the doctor in person now nobody is complaining about that because that's going to make it safe for everybody. Uh, driverless cars, uh, we, have, we have a lot of uh, cars which is completely uh, autonomous, driving by itself in the city where I live. Uh, it's very common to see five or six cars driving by, by themselves, you know, going from one location to another location, no drivers. And that one test by Google most of the time. And, uh, uh, and the same thing, Tesla is working on a completely autonomous car, which is about 20 minutes from where I'm talking to you. Uh, simply, simply put it, IoT is the network of things that collect and, and exchange information from the environment. That is, that's what, what uh, Internet of Things is doing. Um, and uh, another way of looking at Internet of Things is uh, the driver of the industrial revolution or the industry 4.0. And that's true because Internet of Things has two main segment. One of them is the consumer Internet of Things. The other one is the industrial Internet of Things. In the United States, it's more focused on the consumer, customers, Internet of Thing, and the rest of the world is focusing more on the industrial Internet of Thing, which is smart factories, smart cities, smart streets. While in the United States, they're more focused on the consumers. You have the smart uh, watches, smart homes, you know, everything has to do with the consumer uh, himself or herself. So this is this is uh, this shows you that how significant it is when it comes to the Internet of Things. So it's triggered some kind of te technolo technological changes that span over you know a wide uh, field. Uh, Gartner, the famous IT uh, firm, uh, uh, they expect or they forecasted that it would be about 20 billion devices connected by the end of 2020. Cisco, they say that is about 50 billion devices connected. And when I say about connected devices, devices means every device that uh, has an IP address. It's not necessarily that has to be a phone. It could be a thermostat. It could be a, a doorbell. It could be, you know, five or six parts of the car that each one of them has an IP address. That's considered as part of the connected devices. Any device that has an IP address that connects you to the internet, that, that's, they, they count that in this number. You know, IoT development is exciting opportunities, personal, you know, uh, make it make the life much easier, give you some example about it, improve the efficiency, productivity and safety for many businesses. Uh, now, both of them, Internet of Things and digital transformation, they share many things together. I mean, you can see an overlapping part of that. For example, more than 50% of companies think IoT, Internet of Things, is a strategic and one in four, you know, one in four, which means 25%, believe it is tr transformational. So the, they look at the Internet of Things as the thing that will guide them to the digital transformation. So that's good. So 
percent, you know, they think that it's going to change how they do business. And uh, over 50 percent, they think it's very strategic means it's in their plans. You know, and in the five years plan, we know that we have to deal with the Internet of Things. Uh, both increase company longevity, which means longevity means the uh, life of the company. Uh, in the, uh, you know, in the 1920s, the, uh, the average lifespan of a company is about 67 years. Nowadays, it's about 15 years and maybe less and the company disappeared or acquired by another company. And this is how, how you know, how important it is to, to look at digital transformation as something that will help you prolong the, uh, you know, the life of the company. 33%, uh, one in three industry leaders will be, uh, in, you know, will be digitally disrupted by 2020. Translation of this one, look at Uber. Uber disrupted the whole industry of taxi. Airbnb disrupted the whole industry of the hotel. Uh, you know, an accommodation industry. Uh, the same thing with uh, companies like Facebook. They disrupted the whole, you know, industry of the contents where people can just go to those websites and get that information. And you name it. You can, you can look at the different, you know, uh, industries and how the different, in the, the uh, different industry being disrupted by this. Uh, Amazon, as a digital company, they disrupted the whole retail. There's so many companies went out of business because of Amazon.com. Why? Because of the way they are servicing people. Amazon, as, as, a, you know, as a success story, they looked at two things. Number one is customer service and expenses. So the customer service, nobody even matched them. I use them almost every week. Uh, if there's a problem, they're on your side, they will take the loss just to keep you. Number two, number two is the expenses shipping and handling, all these kind of small expenses that you see it at the end when you try to buy stuff, it just turn off everybody. So they just took it off the table. So they disrupted the industry of the retail. Uh, the same thing goes with the uh, streaming. Netflix, you know, disrupted the whole industry of the movies. Why? Because people can just watch everything at their home. So, so one in three, so 33% of the leaders in the industries, uh, they will be disrupted uh, and digitally disrupted. And, and the lesson here is those companies has to be ready. They have to know that somebody gonna come and, you know, and challenge their existing in the market. So they have to digitize themselves and think about how can we deal with that? How can we really be ready for this kind of a challenge? Both enable, when I say both, talking about IoT and digital transformation, enable businesses to connect with the customers and partner an open digital ecosystem to share digital insights, collaborate on solutions, and share the value created. Because it's easy for you to exchange this information and send and receive instead of going through the paperwork and going through the analysis. Now everybody can see the same thing. So, so all of them will be on the same page. Uh, softwares like um, uh, Salesforce, which is software as a service, is, is, is another example of this that's going to simplify relationship between the customers and between the companies when when everybody can see or sees the same you know uh, analytics well you're buying from us you know in in august but you're not buying from us in september how can we help you with that uh, and uh, let me give you the average for this one an example of this is a company that will send you every uh, three months, a summary of your, of your purchases and the average and the time you bought. You look at this, this insight and you say, now I understand, you know, uh, my buying patterns, he, you know, you know with, how can I improve myself? And I spent $200,000 last uh, quarter, so, so I have to see if I can spend more or less. So this, this kind of collaboration and sharing the insight will make it much easier for the customers to see that the company is really taking care of them. And on the other side, the companies will look at it and say, the customer is buying less. What's the problem? We can, we can know about this. And it's, and it's happened, it happens, you know, real time. You don't have to wait until somebody do the analysis. It's just done automatically for you. And there's a dashboard. We can look at it and say, now we got a problem with this customer. Let's try to solve that. Well, your, comp your uh, competition, your competitors are doing it. And if you're not doing it you're, and your competitor is doing it, you're going to be off the market. So 70%, according to IDC, uh, of global uh, discrete manufacturing will offer 
connected products by the end of 2020. So they understand that. All those companies manufacturing, they understand that I need this one to be connected to the Wi-Fi. I'll give you an example of this. You're gonna find refrigerators connected to Wi-Fi. You're gonna find uh, uh, you know, uh, dishwashers and uh, connected to the Wi-Fi. Uh, the same thing with dryers and, and washers connected to the Wi-Fi. Everything you're gonna buy is gonna, gonna give you this ability to have that option to connect it to the Wi-Fi. Just look at the new cars, the new generations of cars. It's connected all the time. So that's that's prediction is really, really, really right on the target. 70% of those manufacturers say, my product should and will have a connection to the internet. Uh, the money is, is in digital. <clears throat> the money is in digital. Digital product and services sales are growing and it's one of every three dollars that will be spent in 2021. It's gonna go high with this virus because everybody's sitting home. People will buy those digital products and if you are not providing those digital product to them and uh, uh, you're gonna lose that. You're talking about one for uh, you from 33% of the spending is just on the digital product and services. And who will leave something like this? Enterprises are overwhelmed by data and digital assets. They already struggle you know, to manage all of this. And this is where we're gonna talk about the AI in this, in this concept. And IT will expand them in a very exponential way because the number of the devices will be added. They will need help finding the insight in this huge, vast stream of data, big data, and manage those assets. Uh, both drive consumption. Digital services easily proven to uh, to uh, their own worth that it's worth it to be, uh, to have, you know, a digital version of your product and services. Bundle product with digital services and content will make it easy for the consumer to consume them. So we have to step back and think about your products, think about your services and see how can I digitize that? Which means how can I offer a digital version? I don't have to completely convert it to digital. But if something happened, this is, uh, you, know, you know, at least you're not gonna be completely shut down. At the same time, this is a new stream of income. A lot of companies look at it and they consider it. And they say, this is, this is the case. You know, the, this company, which is a well-known company, it's a huge company in the United States that sh sells chips, those boxes, those small bags of chips. When we have the virus uh, and we have the shelter in place, everybody stay, stays home, nobody can leave. Nobody's going to the supermarket. Nobody's going to, to the mall or to go into the places to buy them. And they are the last thing on, this, on, the, on the list of anybody. So they created just a whole you know, you know, division, a website with, with everything ready to place your orders and they will de deliver it to you. And they run ads on, the, on TV, they run ads on the internet just to tell people you don't have to go to the supermarket. If you're not feeling comfortable, if you're not feeling safe, just order this one online. And that was the only reason for them not to go out of business. Both companies um, understand, oh, both, both, you know, talking about IoT and digital transfer, transformation, make companies understand customers better. True statement. Use integrated channels, big data analysis, uh, you know, productive analytics and machine learning to uncover, predict, and meet the customer needs. Increasing loyalty and revenue, IoT and IR are here to, you know, to help and they are at the heart of this, of this effort. The last one is using both is future proof, which means they're gonna be protected if something happened. Any kind of uh, disruption in the, in the economy. Uh, uh, make the right strategic bets for the company's product and services uh, portfolio and the future investment using you know IoT data analytics and also using AI. The bottom line here the, to summarize this one is Internet of Things is one of those main catalysts for the or, or drivers for the for the digital transformation because of the information it's collected because of the digitization nature of the Internet of Things. <coughs> now talking about uh, digital transformation and blockchain. The digital transformation is a complicated challenge and we talk about it uh, long enough so everybody have a good idea about it. 
Yeah, but the integration of the blockchain and AI will make this one much easier because they're gonna take care of a few functions that, that's, that's really difficult to manage. Considering the number of the partners, internal, external, or both, involving and giving an information process, a system in which a multitude of electronics parties can securely communicate, collaborate, and transact without human intervention is highly agile and efficient. So security is the key thing. Uh, you know, doing the business and going to digital is great, but how can you sec secure this kind of activities? Uh, enterprises that embrace this kind of transformation will be able to provide better user experience because they're gonna follow the uh, comp compliances of the GDPR and the privacy and the security protocols. Uh, they will be consistent with the, the work uh, flow, more streamlined operations, value added for the services as well. They will be more competitor when it comes uh, to this uh, to this market and they will differentiate themselves. Blockchain itself as a technology um, holistically is managed steps and relationship where participants will share the same data. So everybody who is part of the network will see the same transaction, will see the same data. So transparency is huge. So that's gonna be, that's, that's gonna be one step such as financial relationship and transaction connected to each step. Security and accountability is factored in. If somebody tried to change anything on the network for the blockchain, which we have, we have, for example, a thousand nodes and somebody changed five or six of them, then we'll know about it. And the fraud will be, will stop here. And also will, will, will be a compliance with the government regulation along with the internal rules and processes. That should, you know, give some kind of uh, insurance for, for the people when they apply uh, blockchain. The result is consistency and reduction in cost and time delays, improve quality and reduce risk. Now the case of AI, let's talk about the case of AI, artificial intelligence. One of the biggest advantages of the artificial intelligence is help the companies learn in ways that accelerate innovation. The more you know about your customer, the more you know the insights, the better your decision. When you have a real time information coming to you about a certain customer or customers, it's easy for you to take, to take that decision. You're not gonna be late. You can take care of the situation. And it's assess the company is getting closer to the customer. The best distance between you or between the customer is zero. That you know what the customer thinks, you understand their behavior and you are really one step ahead of that. Uh, you know, for example, if uh, instead of you doing the survey and asking them what exactly they want, you already know this one through the insights. You change the color of the product, you change the shape of the product because of the insight you have. And that's gonna improve also the employees, productivity and engagement because when they talk to the customers, they know what the customer is thinking and it's easy for them to satisfy the needs of the customer. Digital transformation can improve this kind of information. So what is the conclusion for that? The building blocks of the digital transformation, again, is the mindset, which is we believe in it so we can do it, people who will do it and will help, the processes that are gonna be digitized and also the tools. Internet of Things uh, covers all the blocks. Uh, you know, since IoT does not just connect devices and also connect people. So that's, that, that is, that's why IoT is one of the leaders when it comes to digital transformation, which means you have, you're gonna have an IP address for all devices. Blockchain will ensure end-to-end -end security, transparency, immutable, you know, uh, all of these things will, 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 be, will be clear with the blockchain. AI will, will improve, you know, the, uh, the understanding of the customer and gonna, will move the internet of things connections to intelligence. So it's not just a data coming to me, without any kind of understanding. One important step is to team up with the best partners and invest in the education, training, and certifying your teams. Because you are strong as the weakest person in your organization. That's the rule. Look at the weakest person in organization in this field, and that's your strength. This is uh, with this magical mix of Internet of Things, artificial intelligence, and blockchain added to the digital transformation. It's going to make this 
uh, you know, proposition and this goal of digital transformation very easy. I'm done. This is my information. You're more than welcome to connect with me at LinkedIn, or if you have any question, this is my email, and I have a Twitter handle too. Uh, I'll be more than happy to answer the questions. Let me stop the sharing. Uh, Sharif, where are you? I'll, I'll change you to, oh, you're a host now. Okay, excellent. Yes, okay. Uh, many thank you, Dr. Ahmed, for sharing uh, this insightful information. Uh, we're really happy to hear and uh, enjoy this uh, information with us. Uh, regarding it to uh, the participant asking about sharing the material, uh, today, inshallah, once I got it from Dr. Ahmed, I'm going to share with you uh, on email. And regarding it to the uh, recording session, uh, also, once I got it from Zoom, I'm going to share it with you, and also you can find it on our YouTube channel, inshallah. Uh, sure. We can just take uh, in with it this two, uh, 10 minutes, if there is uh, anyone have a question here. Okay. Okay. So, so you want to read them, or you want me to read them? Uh, uh, as, uh, as you like, Dr. Ahmed. It's okay. okay for so. Uh, I'm, I'm just answered the regarding to the question for the uh, material and the recording. Uh, I have a question maybe from uh, okay. uh, Mr. Ahmed Ibrahim asking about what is the privacy issues we may face with a technology like IoT and how we can mitigate. Okay. Uh, also, what are the most important issues we may face during digital? transformation uh, initiatives okay the the uh, the answer for this one is the uh, the two uh, the two elements we talk about them which is uh, blockchain and artificial intelligence security is a big thing because security uh, security as as one of the pillars of the user experience or the customer experience there are three of them which is something called the ssp which is security safety and privacy and if you don't have this, you're going to find yourself in trouble because of the compliance and because of, of if data breaches happen or, or somebody stole the data. And, and you can do business, you know, with, the, with any country, you know, uh, you know out, and especially, you know, in, in Europe, then you have, you have to have some kind of compliance with those things. So security is, a, is an issue, and this is why the blockchain will help it. This is the second one is that how can I go through all this data, which is sent to me by all the digital processes, artificial intelligence will help you. Saying this one is not by any mean, by any means, look at it, this one will, will, you know, will solve the problems. I want you to go back to the building blocks of the, you know, of the digital transformation and each one of them is a challenge, which is the mindset, the resistance from within, which is the top or the bottom. We're talking about people, where I come from, people who can really manage that. You know, that, that will be another thing. Processes, how, which processes we should use to, to digitize. And the same thing goes with the, the case of the, you know, uh, the last time, the tools. I see some questions, somebody sent me a private thing and then put it on, uh, uh, on public. Digital transformation and digital and digitization, I mean, in a technical term, they are the same. It's just digital transformation. What you talk about it is the big umbrella. The process is digitization. When you go and digitize something, the example I gave you about signing, uh, you know, papers like the DocuSign uh, service, that is part of the big picture with the digital transformation. We digitize that process. Uh, the next question, do you think that quantum computing will be part of the current transformation? Quantum computing always there, but it's not, it's not something that you can see tomorrow. You know, my projection for the uh, quantum computing in, in, in places like the United States is within five years. Uh, I don't know about the rest of the world. And quantum, quantum computing is still at the beginning, uh, and it's a different topic. I can spend a whole uh, hour talking about it. But uh, Google announced their something called quantum supremacy, which is uh, they have uh, managed to process uh, uh, a sub uh, process, uh, you know, a mathematical problem that will take about 10 years. On, on the using our current uh, computer power, they, they, they process that one in 300 seconds. 
And that's with, with a simple number of uh, qubit, which is the basis of the quantum. So we're talking about five years from now. I will, I will be worried. I will be excited when, when we have quantum laptops, which is, which is still in the future. And then the other one is digital twin is, 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 is a very good uh, you know, you know, concept. It's part of the digital transformation. It's actually part of the industry 4.0. It is one of the, you know, one of the main concepts used in, in manufacturing. And it's a well-known concept you know, in, in Europe, uh, more than the United States. And uh, the next one is what is the uh, privacy issues? We talk about that. And is it possible to get uh, a summary of all what uh, published, presented? Okay. Well, you need to read the, uh, the PowerPoint and, and talk to Sharif and Sharif will, will, will give it to you. A video conferencing would be great, uh, please. Okay, so recording, excellent. Uh, up to which level blockchain can provide security to digital solution. It's not you know, up to what level, it is how much you are willing to pay and which area you would like to secure. So if you are an, and if you are really a big company and would like to secure the transactions uh, and willing to pay that, uh, then it, there you can do that. And the other thing that uh, blockchain is not for everything. Blockchain is for certain application and one of them is digital transformation. The other one is thank you very much for this. Thank you is there is a program training. Uh, you know, uh, you can ask Sharif about this and about the training program. You are welcome. My question is, uh, does big data play main role? Absolutely, absolutely. That big data is at the heart of that. And I mentioned that and because uh, when you talk about big data analytics, you're talking about huge data coming from all the sensors of the internet of things. You need the, uh, the big data analytics. You need you know, uh, people, and that's why some of the building blocks are the tools and the people, you need something like Spark, uh, Hadoop, you know, uh, Splunk, all these kind of tools that will process the data to give us the insight so we can make that decision uh, you know, uh, in the correct way. Uh, this transformation, because of having a digital platform. Uh, okay, and I have, uh, please share your thoughts on uh, the 5G and digital. Okay, uh, 5G, I'm excited about it, despite the fact and the rumors about 5G is the reason for COVID-19, which is basically some kind of a conspiracy theory. But 5G is, uh, uh, you know, without, I was hoping that, uh, you know, 2020 will be a big splash for, for, uh, for 5G. Uh, Apple here, which is 20 minutes from where I'm talking to you, they are, they, they had a big uh, event for five for the new phone that deals with 5G. The same thing goes with the other companies, but, uh, but the virus just slowed down everything because people need to have money to buy the new hardware. It is, it's good news. It's like going from the 56 modem, and I, I'm sure that most of you are uh, too young to remember that, the dial-up to the broadband. That's how I look at it. So if we can get to the 5G, I will jump on that one right away because it's going to make so many things easier. And the other question, how can blockchain help uh, the tourism field and how can we connect with the government? Okay, uh, my uh, recommendation for you is to talk to Sharif about this because I think he, he, he done a wonderful job about giving presentation about blockchain applications and, and, and he will help you with that. Okay, I think we're done with the questions. And it's right on the time. I would like to thank all of you. I see some of the faces that they are following me on LinkedIn. I have Ahmed and I have uh, the other one. Let me see. Uh, uh, okay, Raneem also, I remember. And Ahmed Ibrahim too. Okay, so thank you so much for your time today. Uh, enjoy the rest of your evening and stay safe and stay healthy and stay sharp. And I'll see you in the next presentation. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Dr. Bye-bye. No problem.